Hi everyone, I hope you can hear me. Um, welcome to Talking Tableau. Today I'm going to address your questions but also um, look to show you some of the additional features uh, that I discussed as part of the lecture um, with regards to the bonus rounds. So um, if you do have any questions that you uh, would like to ask, please feel free to do so within um, the comment section of, the, of this Google Hangout. Otherwise, I'm going to get started and we're going to have a look at um, we're going to have a look at some Tableau. So I'm going to start a new workbook and I'm going to, you'll remember um, that we had um, a data set made available doesn't like that one. Uh, so we'll try again with something different. Um, let's have a look at our Tableau desktop. And we're looking for our sample data. Okay, so we're just going to bring it in as is. And the first thing that I'm going to do um, in this session is talk you through formatting the data. So once our data is loaded, we'll recognise our dimensions and our measures. And from there, we're able to set formats on the data that allows us to um, confidently use the variables uh, in our dashboards and in our, in our um, worksheets and not have to uh, edit the, format, the formats of each of those fields each time. So I'm going to start with the easy ones um, which are down here in the measures. So we know that a price is likely to um, be a currency value. So we can set that as a default. At the moment if we drag item price over into our worksheet we can see that it is being received as, as a number um, but perhaps we would like to change that. So we'll do a drop down uh, and we'll change the data type. Now we might, we'll go to default properties, number format, and we're going to make this a currency. Now there is another option here, of currency custom, um, where we can say that we don't want to display any decimal places uh, and that we would also like to count um, the units in thousands, millions, billions, um, because our values are quite small, we might keep it with no units. We're going to use um, the dollar sign and we'll keep the thousand separators. So what you can see now is that the dollar sign has been introduced to this field. If we were to start a new worksheet and if we were to bring price over, automatically it's now got that dollar sign there. I'm just gonna flick through and check whether we've got any comments. No, it doesn't appear that we do, but that's okay. <laughs> if you are um, thinking that you might like to ask a question, please do feel free to uh, send something through on our comments section here. Otherwise, um, I'll keep going with formatting data. So back to Tableau. Now, cost of goods sold, same thing. Because it is a cost, it's a currency value, so we can default properties, number format, we can change that to currency standard. Notice the range of currencies that are available. So if I were to select um, something European, Japanese actually, let's go Japanese, um, you will see if we start a new worksheet, we double click on cost of goods sold, see how we have the yen symbol. So the range of currencies available in Tableau uh, is um, it's immense. So if you can't find your currency there, uh, we're not trying hard enough. The other uh, items that we might want to change um, some, some dates on, uh, or sorry, some formats on, we're just going to clear this page, we might want to set our purchase date. We may want to track uh, sales over financial years as opposed to calendar years. So let's bring our price in. Um, let's stick 
to some um, cross tab format, so our numbers. Let's bring purchase date in and let's expand that to months. And we'll get rid of quarter and we'll hide this one as well. So now we have our calendar year 2014, January through to September. And 2013, we've got September through to December. If we wanted to have a look at this um, data in a financial year, and in Australia, the financial year is July through to June, we can change the beginning of the financial or fiscal year start by doing the drop down, default properties, fiscal year start. And we're going to say that that starts in July. Now, look what happens to the worksheet. Notice now how we have financial year or fiscal year uh, and the data has been um, re-sorted. Um, so financial year 2014 ends in June and financial year 2015 begins in July. So if we were to get rid of month now, we can see that the data has been broken up into financial years as opposed to calendar years. Let's see if we've got any comments because I think that's a, an interesting um, point to pause on for the moment. No comments. What a shame. That's okay. Um, that's not a problem at all. If you do have any comments, again, please make sure um, to post them in the comments section of the Google Hangout um, and I will make sure that you um, get, a, get a response. So um, what we might do now um, that we have done a little bit of formatting data, we might have a look at blending data. So when we talk about blending data, it's about joining data from different um, data sources or different data sets. And it is um, with the intention of bringing fields from different data sources together so that we can analyze uh, that data together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a new data source. And you'll remember that we did that by connecting to data. And I'm going to bring in from a uh, text file. And I'm going to find that hopefully on my desktop. Yes, it is this salesperson data, which is our CSV file. And I'm going to double click on that and bring that in as it currently stands. I'm going to bring all of it in. Okay, so you'll see now that we have the two data files, we've got our sales person data and we've got our sample data. Now, one of the things that um, we were hoping to um, do with our analysis in Tableau was to work out the very performance of each of our sales staff. So to do that, we need to join these two data sets. Now at the moment, um, you'll remember that when Tableau brings data in, it, it um, tries to help you out by identifying which data is dimensions as opposed to which data is um, measures. So in our salesperson data, Tableau has uh, a understood salesperson, which is identified as the hashtag here. It's a, um, net, it's a uh, numeric field. It's identified out as a measure. It's not a measure, it is a dimension. Why is it a dimension? Because it is our um, describing or our categorical field. Um, so we're gonna bring that up here. Now, we've got salesperson, number up here and if we go into sales data again we've got salesperson measures which we're actually going to bring into dimensions now have a look at what happens i'm going to clear this worksheet have a look at what happens when i bring the salesperson name and the salesperson identifier just to show you um, what is in that field now, if we have, go back to sample data, see this little um, link here? What Tableau has done is it's identified because salesperson is firstly spelt the same, including the capital S, and it is the same data type, i.e. It's a, it's a number in both data sets, it has determined 
that salesperson is a linking field. So if I am to bring in a, a, a field from the sample data, which you'll remember is a separate data set to the salesperson data, if I bring in item quantity, suddenly we are able to look at um, our sales data, our sample data by salesperson. So that is joining two tables to allow us to have a different view um, of the data. Now let's say that salesperson wasn't our linking field. We can simply unclick that and now you'll see we've got a warning saying that there is no linking field um, between the two data sets. That's okay, we acknowledge that. Um, so what we uh, can see is that there's no relationship now between um, the salesperson and, and the total um, item quantity sold. If for some reason, and it often happens, you have a data set um, that you need to join or need to blend and uh, the fields aren't identical in terms of their setup. So the name of the field isn't identical and I would repeat that um, using a capital um, you know, make sure that your uh, letter case is exactly the same in both data sets. Um, for example, if we were to rename this field and pivot salesperson, but we'll just change that to lowercase, you'll see that our option to blend um, has disappeared. A tableau will only assume a linking field if the format and name of the field are an identical match. So let's say we didn't have an identical match as in this case. So we've got a lowercase salesperson in one set and an uppercase salesperson in the other. In order to create a manual join between the two fields, we can go to data and we can say edit relationships. Now, if we create a custom join, let's say add, so that the item that we want to match is our salesperson. So we can say we've got the capitalised salesperson here and a lowercase salesperson here. If we say OK, and you'll see now that we've got a join happening here, we'll say OK. Now you can see that that link is back. OK, so that's very quickly how we can um, combine data sets to give us a new insight into the world we are analysing and also formatting data. So I'm going to jump back and see if we do have any comments. Uh, we don't have any comments. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm actually going to close uh, the webinar. We've gone through two of the activities that were promised in the bonus round. We've gone through the formatting of data um, and particularly with regards to currencies and also with regards to um, the date um, formats um, and use of financial year uh, as opposed to uh, calendar year. Um, so we've gone through formatting data and we've also gone through creating a manual relationship between data sets uh, where Tableau is unable to identify a um, relationship on its own. So that, that just to reiterate the key points about um, Tableau having the necessary uh, information to create a relationship on its own, make sure that the spelling is it's precise. They're the same in, in each of the data sets uh, and also that relates to um, the uppercase or lowercase of um, the field name, make sure the field type is exact. So if you've got um, a numerical field in one which is coming through as a text field in the other, uh, that's not going to work. Um, so you'll need all the fields to be of the same type. And then the last, um, the last section there is that um, if you, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. The last section there is if the data is not, out, if the data structure and format is not an identical match, you can very easily create a relationship, a manual relationship or a custom relationship between the data sets, uh, which will overcome that problem. So thanks for um, attending and uh, for those who are watching this after the fact, thanks for um, 
uh, reviewing this information. I hope you found it useful and um, stay tuned for a future broadcast uh, at a later date. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.